Hello, multi, masterful, masterful, Mozartian malt mates. <laughs> I got there, and thank you to Lixapd. Right, I'll go through that individually, letter by letter, because there really is no way you can actually pronounce this properly. L X I A P D. Right, so thank you for that malt mention. L X I A P D. Uh, and welcome all you whiskey fans to Ralphie Review 944 Extras in which I, on the cask table, uh, on the barrel top, have a cup of tea, right here, and it shows one of the motorbikes I, I used to own, I sold it this year, uh, Triumph Thunderbird Sport, not a sports bike, but just a big over-engineered wonderfully engined triple cylinder smacker of a bike that I own for over 20 years. <laughs> in fact it's the only bike I ever bought new but I sold it this year because things change our lives change and I've got to the stage where I'm not using big bikes because I live in an island and there's just no point because the roads aren't designed for it. So I got myself a little bike, but I'll probably be selling that shortly because I'm just not bonding with it because it's too buzzy. It's uh, for all you bikers out there. And I'll come to the whiskey in a minute. <laughs> um, it's a CRF 230, um, but a 13-year-old Honda, uh, wonderfully engineered, incredibly reliable, solid, uh, f overhead cam motorcycle that's been really well put together but I'm just not getting along with it and that happens so I think possibly I'll leave it another year and perhaps get myself one of a decent second hand to save a bit of money uh, Royal Enfield because it's a Royal Enfield engine that helped me get my world land speed record in the Bonneville Salt Flats in 2016, which still stands, by the way, just so as you know. Sharing. But back to whiskey. Every now and again, we need to walk away and give a little bit of space between ourselves and whiskey. And what we're doing is we're recalibrating. It's just like having an association with anything else. For example, motorbikes. We, we enjoy what we have. We get into the habit of using what we have, but there comes a point in time where we have to step back and say, hang about, wait a minute. Where am I going with this? Um, and you have to look at your collection and say, I've been stocking up in my stash at yesteryear's prices. Not just yesterday's prices, but yesteryear's prices. Do I really have enough whiskey to last me for the rest of my life now? And if so, am I going to stop buying whiskey or am I going to significantly reduce buying whiskey? Or you may be in the situation that you have a mortgage to pay or property rental payments. And they are absolutely rocketing. The price of food and utilities is rocketing. Fuel, the price is rocketing again because all this is manipulated. Uh, it's just that most of the time people are just in denial and just want to get on with their lives. But we have to prepare. We expect the best, but prepare for the worst. And this affects us when we are budgeting for our whiskey habits, our whiskey hobbies, our whiskey routines, our whiskey socialising, our whiskey holidays, our whiskey engagement online. There comes a point where you say, right, what am I going to do now? Because I can't con continue to do what I have been doing and spending what I have been spending. Now we know the price of whiskey is going up because inflation is going up. 
and although some distilleries are charging more for their product and trying to premiumise it, like for example Macallan and Dalmore and Glengoyne, we also know that there are other brands out there where actu which actually have a superior presentation much of the time, particularly in the, with, the, with the basic offerings, the simple standard age statement offerings like Deanston, for example, in Isle of Arden and Glencadam, to a certain extent. But certainly Deanston. I mean, I've just come back to Deanston after we break away, uh, and I'm hugely impressed with what they're bottling, particularly the 12-year-old at a very affordable price in the UK. But I'm saying to myself, you know, I can't go amiss, let's just buy another bottle at Deanston because can they keep the quality as high and indefinitely? Things change, don't they? Um, but then I say, hang about, wait a minute, we've got to exercise a budget here. Now, my personal budget is supplied by you, the viewer, and in particular, my Patreon subscribers, uh, who I'm enormously grateful for, um, and therefore they get the, the live streams and the Q&As and the extra content, extra videos. But I've got to be careful with my budget, and you'll notice this, that I'm not reviewing many whiskies over 18 years of old now. 18 years old. I'm just, I'm not... They're off my radar. I look at an 18 year old whiskey at 150 pounds a bottle and say, no, if someone else wants to buy that, good luck to them. I wish them well. And I'm happy for the distillery because it will certainly boost their profits significantly. But I won't be buying it because I'm managing my budget. And I'm in a position to manage my budget more easily because of the variety and accessibility of Scotch whiskey where I am, which is very near to Scotland, geographically very close to Scotland. So as a result of which, I say, well, I've got the responsibility of presenting whiskies every week as, as, a rev as reviews. So how can I be more in creative and, and not be trying to persuade you to buy £200, $300, €400 Euro bottles of whisky, which I'd probably mark about 84 85 oh, they wouldn't, The marks wouldn't be that much higher than the standard bottlings because many of them, you know, if, particularly if they're bottled at 40 or 43%, they're chill filtered. I mean, these are old whiskies, and the producers are chill filtering them. And that is, I mean, these are official bottlings as well, and that's an absolute damn disgrace. It's an absolute scandal, actually, this willful neglect of Scotch whisky's reputation. And yeah, I know it's controversial, and yeah, I know there's people in the Scotch whisky industry think I'm an idiot, and that's fine. At least they're showing some sort of, you know, it's just their way of showing how much they care. Um, but I stick to, I, I'm always mindful of my budget, because the more I impose a budget on what I buy and review for you, the more it helps you to relate to what are more budget whiskies. Hence the reason I've been doing so many non-age statement whiskies this year and taking the opportunity, even although some of these new non-age statement small distillery offerings like Wolfburn are really quite expensive. And I notice an Irish bottle of whiskey I reviewed recently from Dingle Distillery was also very expensive for what it was. But if the distilleries can get the money and if they can persuade, persuade people to buy them, I'm not going to call them out for it. They're just looking after business. But oh, these sort of more expensive whiskies are an occasional review for me. And what I find, I want to share what I'm doing now to control my budgets because it is better that you exert that self-discipline of controlling your budget rather than overspending and then suddenly saying to yourself, right, enough's enough, no more whiskey purchases for a whole year, at which point you get out of the habit of buying whiskey because you suddenly realise how much money you're saving that you can spend in more essential stuff. You don't hear this sort of statement very often in a whiskey review channel.
You really don't. But we're living in the real world. Um, and I'm just kind of completing a little mini series of non-age statement new distillery bottlings and I'll review a few more before the year's out. But I'm also looking at the more budget whiskey offerings, particularly as we come up to the end of the year. I want to be mindful for those of you who really are on a tight budget. So I'm going to explain a few simple steps on how to manage your budget. And it starts with self-discipline. And the self-discipline is simple. We tend to buy because we get notifications on our mobile devices or we go onto the computer and we look at the the newest bottlings that have come in in case it happens to be Springbank or Kilcairn or something ex generally exciting and collectible but perhaps there's no nothing like that on sale but we see another bottle we say oh that looks interesting it's an independent bottling of Mortlach <sighs> It's not that expensive, let's just buy it. Caution. One of the reasons we tend to overspend is compulsive purchasing. And we compulsively purchase because we've got into the habit of compulsory purchasing. And then we get the bottle delivered and we don't open immediately. We'll save it for later. And then a few months later, you ask yourself, and I've asked myself occasionally, why did I even buy that? Why did I bother buying that? Don't don't break the seal. It's still a perfectly intact bottle. Quick, let's just get it into auction and get some money back. It happens. A piece of self-discipline, and it's very simple, is never look at the sources that motivate you to have compulsory purchases, whether it be auctions, because auctions are notorious for this, the online auctions, or whether it be your regular online shops, or whether it be on the forums or in your whiskey club and someone's raving on about a specific whiskey. Hold back. If it sells out, if it's gone, if it's single cask, let it go. And I'll tell you why. Because there's another few million single casks in the pipeline. There'll be another one along soon. If you miss one, you get the next. Bottles of whiskey are just loved like buses. If you stand at the bus stop long enough, there'll be another one along that's taking you in the right direction, in the destination you want to go. It's just the nature of it. With auctions, really... Fix your budgets carefully. If you find yourself compulsory purchasing, particularly in the 11th hour, and you're starting to bid against someone, right? And it could be the algorithm, depending on which online retailer it is, because there's automatic programs that look for sequences and then can put in automatic bids to nudge up bids. That exists, although in my opinion, it's not used so much in whiskey auctions, more in traditional auctions, online auctions. So be mindful of that. Um, when you look at auctions, look at the modest stuff. Far better a good quality whiskey, pure basic whiskey from a decade ago than some fancy whiskey that everybody's after from a year ago. So for example, great, great example. Johnny Walker Green Label, totally non-collectible, nobody collects it, even better if the label's scratched and the, and the cork's a bit dunted and it's been battered about a bit. But if it's a previous or old generation green, green label, I can assure you, I mean, I really can, it's going to be a hell of a lot better quality than what they're bottling now. And it won't be that much difference in price. Another piece of advice, see if you see an expensive whiskey Phone a friend, cut the cost. You see a whiskey, it's 21 year old something, it's an independent bottling, it's a Bowmore, oh my goodness, 400 pounds, 400 dollars, 400 euros. Uh, I mean, any independent, support, uh, any independent bottlings of Bowmore, they can be good, but unfortunately, the aftermarket cask price 
of certain brands is astronomical and this is reflected in the very high bottling price. Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Bowmore, Macallan, Springbanks, just don't buy them. Say to yourself, see the price they're asking for that. How many other bottles of whiskey that I know to be good could I buy for that price? So now you're giving yourself positive mind games to help you exercise your, your self-control, to help you manage your budget. Also, you're going to cut down in sales until November, end of October, beginning of November. It's the busiest time of year globally for whiskey sales. This is when you're going to pick up a bargain. A relative bargain. Now sure, there's inferior whiskey at a cheap price. That is not a bargain. It's when you see a special release or a distillery only lease on general um, availability or whether you see an independent bottling that someone in your whiskey club or someone online highly recommends or it's had a good review and it's an accessible price an available price and postage isn't too expensive, then go for that. Even buy two bottles. Because the thing about buying two bottles at a good price is that you can hold one bottle as swappables. In other words, someone else can say, well, I got this bottle in my stash and it's this. Then you say, oh, I'd like that bottle. I tell you what, let's just do a straightforward bottle swap. Sealed bottles, or if you trust the person and you've got a decent, really decent whiskey that you've opened and you literally get show the bottle, give them the glass, pour them a dram, say, do you like that? Okay, my half bottle of my older whiskey for your full sealed bottle of younger whiskey. So this again is yet another technique which is going to help us all to manage our budget. The more we, more successful we are at managing our budget and not letting our whiskey spending get out of control which would cause tensions with our family if we've got bills to pay and higher mortgages and higher cost of living the way the way we the way we can self control and oh excuse me here he comes I know I know well 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 oh well here we go little fluffy hi little fluffy Yes, yeah, you're wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, gee, he wants rubbies. He wants rubbies. I don't, for whatever reason, it's the time of year, it's the end of summer, and the cats are getting more affectionate. <laughs> Probably because they want in, they don't want to put, be put out at night, they want to be indoors at night, you see, by the fireside where it's nice and warm and cosy and they can listen to the rain and the high winds outside. They're smart creatures, these. They are smart creatures, aren't you? Your little affectionate sausage. Moggies. You're always better. Forget the fancy pedigrees. You're better with some common sense moggies that don't have health problems and that exercise a little bit of common sense even when they're manipulating the humans and winding the humans up. I got my two cats in exchange for a box of biscuits. Result. Lovely cup of tea. See we can exercise more discipline over our whiskey buying habits. If we are more methodical about the time we take out so we can say right four days of the week I am not touching any alcohol because it's too easy to get into the constant sipper mode it's all right it's just a glass just a couple of glasses oh I'll sleep like, sleep like a log tonight blah 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 by the way over time it catches up with us and therefore this gives us more leverage to control our whiskey budgets when we are controlling our health, controlling our liver, controlling our self sense of responsibility, even as the dead hand of bureaucracy wants to come down hard upon us and impose um, more taxes and more um, punishment for daring to consume whiskey, which 
we are told is a cause of cancer. It's, just, it's getting as blunt as that. But this has been a discussion with my Patreon supporters um, on, my, on that channel and in my live streams. My final word on controlling your budget is find any reason you possibly can to help you and then see what's most effective. Now it could be that you literally have a glass and you put the cash in the glass or in, in, a, in a box, in a container, any kind of whiskey-like container and you literally put in 10 pounds, 10 dollars, 10 euros and when you eventually get the budget after a few weeks then you can go out and buy a bottle of whiskey. It's as simple as that. It's the old piggy bank syndrome. Um, you can't smash the piggy bank until it's full. So if you kind of, I mean, piggy banks even now, they're, they're super cheap to buy. And you've got the fun of smashing them, um, if, unless you prize out the notes and the coins and all the rest of it. But see that old fashioned earning the dram situation where you're putting money aside and you're carefully saving it up and you're carefully, you're spending more time. You're not compulsively purchasing. You're spending more time considering your purchase before you make the purchase. Do you know, it actually amplifies the reward of the, the smell and the taste because you know you've put more effort and more self-discipline into targeting that reward from a really good, solid, bottle of single malt whiskey or whatever liquor happens to float your boat. There we go. I'm Ralphie, sitting in the bothy. First review, which has been fueled exclusively by a cup of tea. I missed my bike to a certain extent, but see the memories I've had out in that bike, going all up in the roads and down the roads in Scotland for many years, fantastic. You, you, the memories are priceless. So there comes a point in life that, yeah, it's one of the skills is to let things go so we, don't do, so we don't get dragged back into the past so we can move all forward into the future. There we go. Bit of philosophy there. Philosophically. That's what it is. Philosophically. Thanks for watching. See you soon.